We humans depend on our community and environment for health, living, growth, and development. The food we eat and the air we breathe all come from our environment. Our community, on the other hand, support us in our social and psychological well-being. Today, we will talk about the community and environmental health. So first, let's define what is community. So community pertains to all organisms living in a specific geography. Community defined as a sociological group in a large place sharing one environment. It includes the individual and the family and the people living in a barangay. In the context of health, a community is a group of people with similar interests or characteristics, not just a group of people living in a specified area. Using this, this, using this definition, communities can be defined not only by location, but also by age, sex, race, hobbies, and shared problems. Now, let's proceed to community health. So, when we say community health, it is the art and science of maintaining, protecting, and improving the health of all the members of the community through organized and sustained community effort. It is the status of health of a defined group of people and the actions and conditions that promote, protect, and preserve their health. After the community health, let's proceed to the environmental health. So, environmental health comprises those aspects of human health that are determined by physical, chemical, biological, social, and psychosocial factors in the surrounding environment. According to World Health Organization, environmental health is concerned with the analysis and control of the environmental factors that may affect health. It aims to prevent disease and create environments that will support healthy individuals. Now, let's proceed to population health. So, when we say population health, it deals with the healthy status of the different communities. For example, the collective health issues of children, teenagers, married couples, and senior citizens in the Philippines. It says here that a healthy community is one that continuously creates and improves both its physical and social environments, helping people to support one another in aspects of daily life and to develop to their fullest potential. Now, let's proceed to the elements of environmental health. So, we have here first the outer air quality. Outdoor air or the air outside buildings from ground level to several miles above the Earth's surface is a valuable resource for current and future generations because it provides essential gases to sustain life and it shields the Earth from harmful radiation. Air pollution can compromise human health and the environment in many ways. For example, the outdoor air pollution. Next, let's have the surface and groundwater. So, the nation's surface water resources, the water in the nation's rivers, streams, creeks, lakes, and reservoirs are vitally important to our everyday life. The main uses of surface water include drinking water and other public uses, irrigation uses, and for use by the thermoelectric power industry to cool electricity generating equipment. Groundwater is an important part of the water cycle. Groundwater is the part of precipitation that seeps down through the soil until it reaches rock material that is saturated with water. And groundwater slowly moves underground, generally at a downward angle because of gravity and may eventually seep into streams, 
lakes, and oceans. After surface and groundwater, let's have the toxic substances and hazardous wastes. So hazardous or toxic waste is the potentially dangerous byproduct of a wide range of activities including manufacturing, farming, water treatment systems, construction, automotive garages, laboratories, hospitals, and other industries. The waste may be liquid, solid, or sludge and contain chemicals, heavy metals, radiation, pathogens, or other materials. Even households generate hazardous waste from items such as batteries, used computer equipment, and leftover paints or pesticides. Toxic waste can harm people, animals, and plants, whether it ends up in the ground, in streams, or even in the air. Some toxins such as mercury and lead persist in the environment for many years and accumulate over time. Humans and wildlife often absorb these toxic substances when they eat fish or other prey. Now, we have here the homes and communities. A great amount of time is spent inside the home. People may be exposed to indoor air pollution, inadequate ventilation and sanitation, home structural problems, electrical and fire hazard, and lead-based paint hazards. Home safety is essential in community and environmental health. Now, let's have the infrastructure and surveillance. The government plays a major role in ensuring a healthy environment for communities, places for recreation, education and worship, facilities, and businesses must be integrated with communities by efficient infrastructure and transportation. Transportation systems focus on cars as the major mode of mobility will just produce more cars, road congestion, and air pollution. Transportation projects must center on people and encourage them to be physically active and less dependent on oil-dependent modes of transit. After that, we have here global environmental health. A healthy population is essential for economic development. The poorest people on the planet tend to suffer most from the health effects from exposures to environmental hazards like air pollution and impure water. In turn, disease and disability related to polluted environments slows and blocks economic development. In addition to its toll on human suffering, illness carries a significant financial burden in the form of health care expenditures and loss productivity. For example, unhealthy children often cannot attend or perform well in school and unhealthy adults cannot work or care for their families. After the elements of environmental health, let's proceed to the environmental health issues. So we have here shuffled letters. So kindly arrange the shuffled letters to identify the environmental issue that affect our community. Okay, so that is soil erosion. So soil erosion is a naturally occurring process that affects all landforms. In agriculture, soil erosion refers to the wearing away of a field topsoil by the natural physical forces of water and wind or through forces associated with farming activities such as tillage. The effects of soil erosion go beyond the loss of fertile land. It has led to increase pollution and sedimentation in streams and rivers, clogging these waterways and causing declines in fish and other species, and degraded lands 
are also often less able to hold on to water, which can worsen flooding. Sustainable land use can help to reduce the impacts of agriculture and livestock, preventing soil degradation and soil erosion, and the loss of valuable land to desertification. Next, kindly arrange these shuffled letters. So, this is cyanide fishing. Corals play a pivotal role in marine ecosystems as well as impact humans in significant ways. These marine species face threats as temperatures rise and humans utilize fishing techniques that stun fish and release harmful chemicals into the oceans. Cyanide fishing is a method of collecting live fish mainly for use in aquariums which involves spraying a sodium cyanide mixture into the desired fish habitat in order to stun the fish. The practice hurts not only the target population but also many other marine organisms including coral and coral reefs. Next, what is this shuffled letter? Okay, this refers to the global warming. Global warming is the increase of temperature of the Earth's atmosphere. It is caused by a constellation of factors such as a rise in the levels of greenhouse gases, the reflective properties of the Earth's surface, and the amount of solar energy reaching the Earth. Now, kindly arrange these shuffled letters. So this pertains to air, water, and noise pollution. It is a man-made problem mainly caused by human waste material, release of poisonous gases and other chemical pollutants from the industry, agricultural pollutants like pesticides and chemical fertilizers, pollutants by automobiles and dumping of chemical and nuclear wastes, and etc. It has led to a worldwide environmental crisis. In many ways, it has changed both the individual and social ways of life. Now, let's have the another shuffle letters. So, this pertains to deforestation. Deforestation is the permanent removal of trees to make room for something besides forest. This can include clearing the land for agriculture or grazing or using the timber for fuel, construction or manufacturing. Forests cover more than 30% of the Earth's land surface. According to the World Wildlife Fund, these forested areas can provide food, medicine, and fuel for more than a billion people. Worldwide, forests provide 13.4 million people with jobs in the forest sector, and another 41 million people have jobs related to forests. Forests are a resource, but they are also large, undeveloped swaths of land that can be converted for purposes such as a agriculture and grazing. Let's proceed to the another shuffle letters. So this refers to the improper waste disposal. Improper waste disposal is the disposal of waste in a way that has negative consequences for the environment. Examples include littering, hazardous waste that is dumped into the ground, and not recycling items that should be recycled. Some causes of these are ignorance, laziness, and greed. So, Improper waste disposal may affect our health like lung disease, heart problem, skin irritation, problem or abnormality in breathing, and more. Affects our climate, air pollution, soil contamination, and many more. Now, let's have the another shuffle letters. 
So, this pertains to oil spill. Oil spill leakage of petroleum onto the surface of a large body of water. Oil spills are of great concern due to the enormous economic loss and the long term and significant harm to marine ecosystems, local economy, and coastal society and community. Now, let's have the another shuffle letters. So, it pertains to illegal mining. Illegal mining is mining activity that is undertaken without state permission. In particular, in absence of land rights, mining licenses, and exploration or mineral transportation permits, illegal mining can be a subsistence activity, as is the case with artisanal mining, or it can belong to large-scale organized crime, spearheaded by illegal mining syndicates. Next shuffled letter we have here. So it refers to the climate change. Climate change include both the global warming driven by human emissions of greenhouse gases and the resulting large scale shifts in weather patterns. Now let's have the another shuffled letters. So, it pertains to the coral reef degradation. Water pollution is perhaps the most obvious cause of coral reef destruction. Reefs are harmed when oil, fertilizer, and human or animal waste are dumped in the area. These elements can end up changing the chemical makeup of the water, but the waste can also block life-giving sunlight to the reef. Floating trash can also cut young coral polyps off from the nutrients they need to grow into a thriving reef. Now, let's have the last shuffled letters. So, this pertains to pesticide drift. Pesticide drift refers to the unintentional diffusion of pesticides and the potential negative effects of pesticide application, including off-target contamination due to spray drift as well as runoff from plants or soil. This can lead to damage in human health, environmental contamination, and property damage. So we are done with community health and environmental health. So remember, we live in a democratic country. While it is true that we have the right to use our environment for our own growth, we must not forget that for each right is an equivalent responsibility. We cannot just consume our resources without planning carefully on how to replace them. We cannot just throw our litter anywhere and not expect to suffer the consequences. Everything in this world is interconnected. The natural catastrophes that the Philippines face in the last decades are all reactions of the environment to our greed and neglect. However, there is still hope to protect our environment and slow down climate change. With our little deeds, such as throwing our litter in proper trash bins, we can save our home country.